Hi everyone, my name is Heng Yao. I'm a PhD student working with Dr. Benjamin Locke in Virtual Experiences Research Group at the University of Florida. Today, I will present our paper toward automated evaluation of empathetic responses in virtual human interaction system for mental health scenarios. This is a multi site study. We worked with Dr. Garnaker, a psychiatrist, clinician, and a researcher in Mountain Sinai System in, in New York, and Dr. Foster, a professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Health at the Florida International University. We collaborated to work on this project to utilize intelligent virtual agents to solve some problems in mental health scenarios. But first, here's, a, here's some background. Clinicians' negative emotional responses to suicidal patients after they expressed the suicidal ideation affect patients' short and long-term outcomes. Clinicians' negative emotion, re, negative emotion responses also impair their ability to express empathy to clinician to, to patients, and the clinicians' empathetic skills could facilitate a good patient therapist relationship and good therapy outcomes. So it meant that if a patient experiences depression and expresses I don't really care about anything anymore. I, I just feel like everything makes me cry. Actually, this is an important moment that the clinician should try to express empathy to the patient. So what if the, the clinician just ignores the patient's statement and keeps going to ask another question? This is the biggest indicator that the patient will commit to suicide. So previous work has been done to investigate how to train health professions train sympathetic skills. Researchers found that virtual patients can be used in training medical students in the psychic communication skills, since virtual patients could offer a training opportunity with low pressure. With lower pressure, also Carmen proposed the empathetic communication and coding system to evaluate physicians' empathy level during the medical interview, so which allows researchers to evaluate the abstract empathy emotion to a numeric level. Also, virtual humans were used, used to support in mental health conversations like the same things in e smart projects. The previous work shows that virtual human can be used in mental health scenarios and to train healthcare professionals train its empathetic communication skills. Given the previous work, the virtual human interaction system could be used to increase healthcare professionals train its awareness of their negative emotional response, responses and train them to respond with high levels of empathy. There are several solutions to improve healthcare professionals' training's empathetic skills. Virtual patients can be employed to increase clinicians' awareness of their responses after patients express suicidal ideation in order to express empathy towards their real patients. To train clinicians to respond with high level of empathy, the empathy levels of clinicians' responses must be identified so that the corresponding feedback can be provided. So normally experts are involved it is precise to evaluate the clinicians' responses in these levels, then identify the empathy levels and provide appropriate feedback. There are advantages and disadvantages of utilizing experts in this precise. The advantages include experts can detect subtle human emotion and thus provide accurate, real-time, and personalized feedback to trainees. The limitations include there is a large population of trainees to be trained, but fewer experts to evaluate them. Also, there are difficulties with standardizing ev evaluations among experts. Given this gap, this is our contribution. We investigated the precise of using virtual agents techniques to automatically evaluate empathetic responses and provide automated, accurate, personalized feedback. We want to provide a practicing opportunity to healthcare professional trainees to interact with virtual patients and receive automated, accurate, and personalized feedback. We expect uh, that our approach can generalize to other behaviors beyond empathy and enable the wider application of using intelligent virtual agents in personal skills training and education. Here's the system description. Users can interact with virtual patients on website by asking questions. The question will be sent to our Virtual People Factory server. The Virtual People Factory server is an authoring system developed in our lab, specialized in creating web-based Conversational specific, conversation specific virtual patients, virtual humans. The conversational model behind the virtual humans consists of a set of predefined questions and answers. Users will be able to get an answer. And during the interaction, the virtual patient will see something statement express, expressing suicidal ideation, and the user's response to these statements are critical. The virtual people factory server can also mark all users' response after the virtual patient expressed the suicidal ideation. One of the author 
who is a mental health expert, trained research assistants to code the image level of the responses. We use the coded responses as a training data set and train the text classifiers and integrated the text classifiers into our system to evaluate the user's empathetic responses and, appro and provide appropriate feedback. Our development mainly focuses on voter agency interaction and the training text classifiers to evaluate our empathetic, re evaluate empathetic responses. We created the virtual human models for Bernie Cohen and Cynthia Young in Adobe Fuse. Here's how they look like. Here, here he, here's an example of the interaction with Bernie. This is a screen recorded video on the virtual people factory website. Participants got a link and had a similar interaction. I can click the microphone to speak to Bernie and receive his response. What's your name? I'm Bernie, Bernie Cohen. How are you? So I can continue to ask more questions if I have. I don't know. I'm still in shock from everything that happened. I told you, I'm a burning woman, but I do not believe in burdening others with my feelings. So, based on the video, you can watch the virtual patient on how they express anxiety and how we are trying to train clinician skills to show empathy to patients. So we used the virtual people factory to enable virtual patients to answer specific questions. Bernie can react to 2,186 questions and give 286 answers. Cynthia can understand 4,310 questions and respond with 310 answers. So here are the precise two train text classifiers. So first, we sent out the links to interact with Bernie and Cynthia to a group of graduate healthcare students to test the interaction and collect their responses after the voter patient expressed suicidal ideation. One of the authors, who is a mental health expert, trained a research assistant to code the image level of, this, of these responses based on the ECCI scale. The research assistants achieved the interracial reliability of larger than 0.8. We use the Wika, which is an open source machine learning software to train and evaluate multiple text classifiers. We ran a user study with 20 participants to test our precise. We didn't receive response, responses for the demographic survey for two participants. Among the rest, 18 participants, 13 participants were male and five participants were female. Participants' ages ranged from 27 to 45. The average is 33.6, standard deviation is 5.1. Here's our study procedure. Participa participants were assigned to two groups randomly. Participants in both groups read the instructions to interact with the virtual patient first. Then to achieve counterbalance, participants in group 1 interacted with Bernie first and then interacted with Cynthia. Participants in group 2 interacted with Cynthia first and then interacted with Bernie. After the interaction, we extracted the participants' responses after virtual patients expressed the suicidal ideation one of the authors a board certificate adult psychiatrist, trained research assistants to code the image level of all these responses. We also used the training classifiers to, to predict the image level of all these responses. And finally, we evaluated the performance of the classifiers using experts coded the results as a standard. We evaluated the classifiers performance to recognize low image level, medium image level, and high image level response. We we'll tried to identify the optimal classifier for, for each level. We analyzed the receiver operating characteristic curve and the area under the ROC curve of different classifiers. So the ROC curve is created by plotting the true positive rate against the false positive rate at the various threshold settings. And the ideal point on the ROC curve would be zero one, that is all positive examples are classified correctly and no negative examples are misclassified as positive. A method to find the optimal threshold proposed by previous research is finding the point closest to the upper left corner, which ensures both a high true positive rate and a low false positive rate. So this is the area under the ROC curve, which is also a useful metric for classifier performance. The worst AUC is 0.5 and the best AUC is 1. A guide to use AUC to evaluate classifier performance indicates that AUC of 0.6 to 0.69 is per performance, 0.7 to 0.79 is fair performance, 
0 0.8 to 0 0.89 is good performance, and greater than 0 0.9 is excellent performance. We selected the optimal classifier based on the RC curve and AOC score. So if the RC curves do not interact, if the RC curves of different classifiers do not intersect, like the example in this finger, so based on the previous literature, the best curve is the one that is left leftmost. But if the RC curves of different classifiers intersect, like the like the example in this finger, so actually based on the previous literature. The method proposed by Elker, we can find the uh, optimal cost fair and the threshold using the IU method. So based on the RC curve and the UC score, we found that we found different optimal cost fairs for different input levels. And also the overall performance of optimal cost fairs for each level is good. The UC score of the cost fair of the optimal cost fair is larger than 0.8. So following this precise, we were able to find classifiers with good performance to recognize low, medium, and high MCLI and high response. And the corresponding feedback could be, could be provided to clinicians based on the evaluation result. And please read our paper to check the detailed information on the classifier's performance. So this work demonstrates the applic applicability of using virtual agents techniques to automatically identify clinicians' responses in MCLI levels. So here's, here's an example of the critical moment right after the vulture patient expressed suicidal ideation. The vulture patient said, I don't really care about anything anymore. It feels like everything makes me cry. And the participant said, I'm, so, I'm really sorry you feel that way. I understand how disheartening that may feel. Our system read this response as high MC level response. And a group of research assistants trained by mental health experts also read this response as high MC level response. So this functionality enables us to provide real-time feedback to a large group of healthcare profession trainees. We can send out the links to trainees and they can interact with vulture patients to practice their empathetic skills. This work shows the precise of automating the evaluation of empathetic response levels and the potential to use vulture human interaction to train clinicians' skills to show empathy. We expect that our approach can generalize to other behaviors beyond empathy and enable wider application of using intelligent virtual agents in personal skills training in education. Previous work, previous literature shows that clinicians' tone voice and facial expressions has a significant effect on their empathy level from the patient perspective. Therefore, the next step could be to explore extracting features from the audio and facial expressions to predict empathy level and also integrating the audio and facial expressions features with features from the textual data to predict the, predict the MC level. So research reported in this work were supported by the National Institutes of Health and this award number. And thank you, any questions? And, uh, and please feel free to contact me at this email if you have any questions. Thank you.